What's up guys, John here, and in today's lesson I'm gonna show you how to play Waiting on the World to Change by John Mayer. I'm gonna show you a pretty note-for-note -note version of this. It's gonna be really similar to the way John Mayer plays it, and it's a little bit more advanced with these sort of Hendrix-style thumb chords. I'm also gonna do another lesson that's just breaking it down as like an easy acoustic version, so I'll link that up down below as well. This is the more note-for-note -note version. Before we get into the lesson, make sure to hit the thumbs up button, and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell notification. Thank you so much for your support. Any comment below, leave future requests for song lessons. I'm doing a lot of song lessons, so get that in down below in the comments. All right, let's get into it. The first section and really the main progression of the tune sounds like this. So we're using a couple chords here. We're going from a D to a B minor to a G to a D then an A to a B minor, and a G to a D. That's the main progression there. We're gonna start out on this thumb chord on the 10th fret. Again, I'm on electric. This is definitely gonna be more of an electric version. We've got the 10th fret with our thumb on the low E string. And then the third finger is gonna play the 12th fret on the D string, second finger on the 11th fret of the G string, and first finger does a bar covering the 10th fret on the B and the E strings. So we should have these notes. 10, 12, 11, 10, 10. That's our first chord, D major. It's the same as like this chord, right? Now I think of these chords as like your bar chords, but converted to thumb chords. Again, this is a great song to play on a strat because you can get your thumb over nice and easy. Depending upon what type of guitar you have, it may be a little harder to do this. Fenders are great because the necks are really comfortable, so. Then we'll go to a B minor seven. And I think this is one of the easier ways to play this chord. You could also do it like this, just a straight B minor. But we're gonna use a B minor seven. We're gonna play the seventh fret of the low E. And then our first finger is gonna do a bar covering D, G, B, and E on the seventh fret. So four strings there and then the thumb. We'll mute the A string sounds like this and it's just a cool grip like this it's very Hendrix you know Hendrix would do little wing like it's like a little wing kind of chord like that so we're gonna go from the D to the B minor 7 then we're gonna take this same shape that we played for D and we're gonna put it on the third fret it's gonna be a G chord here our root note is on the low E string so we've got three five, four, three, three, muting the A string. And I do that with my thumb, kind of mutes it, and my third finger also mutes that string as well. So I could strum this chord, and no open strings. So D, B minor seven, G, and then we're gonna go to a D bar chord on the fifth fret. And this is gonna be first finger on the A string, fifth fret, third finger lays flat, does a bar on the seventh fret covering D, G, and B strings. We'll mute the high E and the low E. And you could use your pinky if you want, or your third finger, whichever's comfortable for you. So, so far our main progression is D, B minor seven, G, D. Then we're gonna go. So that's sort of the next two bars there. We'll go to A, which is the same chord as G and same chord as D, but on the fifth fret. So five, seven, six, five, five. Then to B minor seven again, then to G, then to D. So here's what all of that sounds like. D, B minor seven, G, D. Minor seven, G, D. That's our main progression for the verse. Me and all my friends, they're all misunderstood. So, 
so you got those chords, practice them up, get them clean, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of what's called chord anticipation. So instead of the chords, we have two chords per bar, and instead of them being like right even on the beat like this, one, two, three, four, it would be really weird if this song was like this. <laughs> right on the beat each chord the first one's on the beat and then the next one is pushed so it's like this one and two and three and four and 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 so on the beat and then the and of two so count this out loud go one and two and three and four and the strumming hand, I'm just doing two downs in a row. Down, down, start again. Down, down. And that's really our groove for the whole song. So put that rhythm together with the chords and it, you'll really get it sounding like the recording. So start with that. Then when we get into the chorus, keep on waiting, waiting, waiting on. We do this progression. Keep on we do a variation. It's not that we don't care. It's not that we fight it fair. So what I did there was I went from D and instead of going straight to the B minor, I went to an E minor 7. D, E minor 7, E minor 7, E minor 7. So here's the E minor 7 shape. We're on the 7th fret of the A string and we're gonna go 7, 9, 7, 8, 7 from the A string down. Really cool chord, right? So it's not that we don't care, we just know that they're fighting fair. Right? So that's our variation. D, E minor 7, B minor 7, E minor 7. Then the rest of the progression is the same. The, the two bars from the, from the previous part. A, B minor 7, G, D. So that's the only variation there that happens in the chorus. All right, next part we need to learn is the bridge. And the bridge is a little bit ambiguous. It's like a vamp on this G minor chord with the horns, uh, of course, being arranged by Roy Hargrove, an awesome arrangement that he did on that. So here, here's what it sounds like. progression. So it's an eight bar groove there on basically a G minor six chord. So what John Mayer does when you watch him play live is he goes to this funky groove and he puts his first finger on the third fret, the root note of the E string, that, that note is G, and then he puts his pinky on the seventh fret of the A string. So it's a bit of a stretch here, right? First and pinky just stretched out. And, and the rhythm that you can do is eighth notes, one and, just two downs, down, down, and then go down, up, down, up. And that's gonna be 16th notes, just on like chicken scratch, chicken, 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 just muting. You go. And then you can hit that open E in between like that for eight bars, so we'll go a one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, two, three, four, and four more. Here we go, a one, two, back to the progression. that bridge comes the solo that ascending uh, you know Stevie Ray Vaughan quote okay the last part that I'm going to show you is the ending and this is the ending tag so let's say we're playing that main progression what we're gonna do is we're gonna repeat the A T 
to uh, B minor part, so we'll go keep on waiting, waiting, waiting on the world to change. But we keep on waiting, waiting, so we just repeat those last two bars, and then we just go, waiting on the world to change, waiting on the world to change, and then we end like this. So again, we just repeated the last two bars there, A, B minor, G, D. And then we do that again, A, B minor, G, D. Then just go G to D, G, D, G, D, G, D. And that ending rhythm is one and two and. So we'll do two downs on the G and we'll kind of pump the chord pressure and release just to get the mutes in between and then hit the D chord on the and of two one and two with that chord anticipation so one last thing that I want to leave you with is why would we use our thumb like this to play the chords well one of the beautiful things about this style which again is coming out of the Hendrix slash Curtis Mayfield you know this tune very closely resembles get ready. Da, 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 da. Curtis Mayfield's people get ready so the cool thing about using your pinky is you now or using your thumb frees up your pinky to play fills off the chord and little like ornamentations, hammer-ons, pull-offs, double stops, slides, and all that stuff. So the more fingers that I have free, the better if I want to go. Now try and play something like, like that with bar chords. Good luck. <laughs> so that's why we use the thumb chords. All right, you guys, I really hope this lesson helps you out and gives you some insight into this R&B style of playing rhythm guitar and, of course, John Mayer's style. I feel like I have a lot of experience with this because I've transcribed so many songs, whether they're Steve Cropper or Hendrix or a lot of John Mayer tunes, learned every song on this album, Continuum. It's a great one. Check it out. Make sure you subscribe. We've got new videos dropping all the time. Also, if you want to get a free PDF that's really going to help your soloing, you can click the link below and get a free PDF that's over 100 pages long with licks over major, minor, and dominant chords. So check that out as my gift to you. Thanks so much for your support, and we'll see you in the next video.